good evening to each and every one of you. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At this time, we'd like to begin our evening service. We'd just like to welcome each and every one of you, those that are looking on. We'd like to welcome you and trust that you are just going to give God praise. Let us all stand as we sing out this song. Hallelujah.
we need to say thank you to Jesus. Because some people lie down and they cannot get up. Some people lie down and they never wake up. Some people just cannot make it and never see this new day. So it is a blessing to see a new day and to have health and strength. And we know that our God is our provider. We know God is always there fighting our battle. No matter how tough things may get, we know that God is with us. Amen. Let us all stand as we sing out these choruses. Victory is mine. Deliverance is mine. Words are very powerful. What you say, that is what you're going to have. If you get up in the morning and say, I don't feel good. I just feel tired. I just feel to give up. But that is exactly what your body is going to do. Feel tired. But when you get up and thank God and say, Thank God for my strength and I'm ready to move on, you will have that strength. So victory is mine. Hallelujah.
become a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So if somebody make you feel, anybody tell you that you are nobody, you know that you are a son and a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I just have like to welcome our pastor and our God.
because we do not know what the morrow might bring forth. For us, dear Lord, the truth is tonight might be the last night of planet Earth. Jesus might come before tomorrow's sunrise. Glory to God. We'll be thankful. We didn't wait for COVID to come to church. Uh, we serve the Lord nonetheless. And that's why the Apostle Paul had mentioned to Timothy, man, preach that word in season, out of season. And there was an admonition that we got to serve the Lord in season, out of season. COVID or no COVID, uh, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Praise God. One of these days, we don't have to worry. Think about any sickness, any disease, any pestilence, any restrictions coming our mouths, uh, dear Father. Praise God, hallelujah. In that glorious and celestial city, no sin, no devil, no evil, no plague, no pestilence uh, will enter that glorious city. Thank God that we are not citizens here. Lord, our citizenship is in heaven. Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you for blessing the message tonight in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you and have your seats. Um, talking about forever faithful, I thought I'd share, uh, I'd share the story with you about old Fred. Well, old Fred was a faithful Christian. And uh, he found himself now in the hospital. And so he was near death. And so the family called the pastor to stand with them, to stand by them, because an old faithful soldier, you know, is in hospital and needs uh, to see the pastor and need some prayer. So the pastor came and stood at old Fred's bed and old Fred's condition seemed to be deteriorating and so he motioned, he motioned frantically for something to write on. You know, it got to be, got to be something serious, got to be something on his heart. So the pastor lovingly handed him a pen and a piece of paper and so old Fred used his last bit of energy to, to scribble a note. And then, after scribbling that note, sadly, he died. So the pastor thought, well, it may not be best to look at the note at that time. So he placed that note that Fred wrote just before he died in his jacket pocket. So at the funeral, as he was finishing his message to pastor, he realized that he was wearing, wait a minute, the same jacket he was wearing when he had visited old Fred in the hospital, when he died. So he looked at the congregation and he said to them, you know, I must tell you that because I've just come to the realization that I was in the hospital visiting old Fred before he died. But just before he died, he asked for a pen and the people to scribble something down. And so I handed him the pen and paper, and he, he wrote he wrote a note down, he wrote something down, I have looked at it, and I put it in my jacket pocket. And so, I haven't looked at it up to now, but um, knowing the kind of man Fred was, uh, there got to be a word of inspiration for us all in that note. So the pastor took out the note from his jacket pocket, and he read it to the congregation. Preacher, you are standing on my oxygen too. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to be in that pastor's position at that point in time. He came to pray, but of course, things didn't turn out. But thank God, amen, that he is faithful and for those who are faithful unto the Lord. Thank God for you who remain faithful in Christ despite um, what may come your way, despite what may be on your plate, what may be on your dish, uh, that you deem that I am going to be faithful. We have looked at the definition of faithfulness, number one. We are looking and have been looking uh, at faithfulness demonstrated. Last time I left you, I left you speaking about our Savior Jesus, uh, the ultimate example of faithfulness demonstrated. The passage of scripture that we gleaned from uh, comes um, from the book of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16 and verses 21. And Jesus, uh, the Bible tells us that he brought his disciples together and he tells them very clearly, with no uncertainty, I am going to Jerusalem. And he tells they have been to Jerusalem several times, mind you, but this was going to be something different. It was going to be the last. 
before Jesus um, were to give his life. He told them, I'm going to Jerusalem, and I am going to die there. I'm going to be arrested, I'm going to be beaten, I'm going to be crucified. But he said, even though I know all these things are going to happen, I am going anyway. Praise God. Because that is my destiny. That's what I came here to do. You ought to remember following that one of his disciples, Peter by name, he withstood the Lord and said, no, such a thing will never, never happen. God forbid that this thing should happen to you. Jesus looked to him and said, get thee behind me, Satan. You see, the devil was using Peter to cause Jesus to make a detour. He was causing, wanting Jesus to quit. He was wanting Jesus um, to just give up. Why go to Jerusalem if you know such bad things are going to happen to you? Why, why continue on this journey? I mean, it doesn't make any sense at all. Jesus, uh, we truly need you. We need you more than ever. Now you are saying that you must go and you must lay down your, your life. Um, such a thing must not happen at all. And Jesus had to rebuke uh, the devil in Peter very, very strongly and told with no uncertainty that you are not safe in the things uh, of God. Again, folks, I want to caution every one of us tonight. There are going to be many voices that will come your way. Some people might seem, some voices might seem, though that they truly empathize with you. They are truly concerned about your well-being. Or perhaps they might have your back because the way that they are talking, it might only seem that. But folks, you must again re-examine yourself and re-examine the purpose that God has for your life. Sometimes the path that God may have for us it may not be glamorous. It might be a path, folks, of discipline. It might be a path of suffering. It might be a path of rejection. It might be a path where you are misunderstood. It might be a path that you are ostracized. It may be a path that people will laugh at you. Your own family might mock you and they might scoff at you. Folks, but I want to say tonight, once God has laid out a path for you to go on, praise the Lord, do not detour at all. Do not look. God told Joshua that. He said, Joshua, I have a call for you. I have a mission for you. I have raised you up to lead this people now into the promised land. Moses brought the people thus far, but you must take them in. Because you see, Joshua is a representation of Christ, praise God. Moses was of the law. And you see, folks, the law could not bring the people into Canaan land. And God raised up Joshua, praise God. Which, of course, his name is just like Jesus, meaning Savior. Glory to God. So what the law could not do, grace did. Jesus did. Bring them into the land. And God told him, it's not going to be an easy task. Son. It's not going to be easy for you, Joshua. But I have appointed you. You've got to be strong. You've got to be courageous. Do not look to the right. Do not look to the left. Do not deviate at all. When they go and get stuck and discouraged, do not leave off. Do not at all listen to anybody, to anything. I have already commanded you. I have mandated you. And that's the only mandate that you need. Glory to God. Thank God that Joshua listened to God and he was successful in bringing in the people into the land of Canaan. So again and again throughout his ministry, Satan tried to tempt Jesus to be unfaithful. Just as Jesus started his ministry, he went out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He was praying and fasting. And the devil came uh, to him uh, and tempted him sorely about deviating from the plan that God has for his life. Uh, had Jesus hearkened to the devil, had Jesus listened to Satan, he would have been, folks, a total failure. And so the plan of redemption would not have happened. But praise God uh, that even though the devil tempted him sorely about giving up, uh, about being unfaithful, 
Do not go to the cross. Do not die for these people's sins. Because these people do not deserve your forgiveness. They do not deserve your blood to be shed. They do not deserve your sacrifice. They do not deserve your suffering. And so it makes absolutely no sense. The people are unworthy. Yet Jesus Brothers and sisters, uh, left heaven for this very purpose. Um, if Jesus uh, had done everything else which he did, folks, uh, been born of the virgin, living a sinless life, uh, performing miracles after miracles, feeding the multitude um, out of uh, just a small lunch of bread uh, and fishes, cleansing the lepers, uh, opening the eyes of the blind, raising the dead left, right, and center. We're talking about miracles after miracles um, and Jesus uh, had deviated now from the road uh, to Jerusalem still uh, we would have been lost in our sins uh, and going to an endless eternity folks uh, it was not the miracles that Jesus did uh, that saved us uh, I want you to understand that glory to God uh, it was not feeling the multitude uh, that saved us no sorry it is not even the raising of Jairus' daughter it was not even the raising of the widow's son of, of Nain in, in Luke chapter 7 it was not even the raising of Lazarus uh, in John chapter 11 after 4 days uh, those things were magnificent uh, they were great they were miraculous but those things is not what saved us. What saved us was the fact that Jesus did not quit. Jesus did not give up. But Jesus maintained that he will go to Jerusalem and he will go and lay down his life. And by the laying of his life, Jesus knew that many sons would be born and daughters in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes the road to service, um, it is not an easy road, folks. Um, don't ever look for an easy road uh, to serve the Lord when God has already given you the road uh, and God has already given you the pathway, glory to God. Uh, if that road, brothers and sisters, means suffering, the Bible says to suffer with Christ means that you would reign uh, with Him someday. Praise God. Uh, hallelujah. Whatever is your destiny tonight, folks, um, Make sure by the grace of God that you do not detour at all. And so there were many obstacles as well. It was going to be a tough, tough, tough road. Lots of difficulties. And every time Jesus faced a difficulty, every time Jesus faced a turn on the road, the devil would be right here to tell him, just quit them. Just give up. Um, it isn't worth it at all. You have done so much already. You have done so much good for the people. Um, and listen, uh, just give up. Um, praise God. The Savior that we serve today was never a quitter. Praise God. Uh, and that is why tonight, folks, um, we must be like Jesus. Uh, it might be tough. It might be hard. It might be difficult. But never give up. Um, never lay down your arms. Uh, glory to God. You might even get this but folks, you beat that discouragement uh, like what David did. Uh, you read in the book of 2 Samuel chapter uh, 13. The Bible tells us that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Um, he lost everything. Uh, he went out to battle and returned to ho a home only to find out that the Amalekites um, have invaded the south and Ziklag uh, been burnt with fire and his wives, his children and the men's wives or the family were all taken captive. Um, top of that, the men uh, and spoke about stoning David because he was responsible for it all. They were looking to blame him. In the midst of all of this, what did David do? He encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes, folks, there will be nobody to encourage you. I'm, I'm here to tell you, sometimes it is alone, it could be lonely. I'm here. I could tell you that. Brothers and sisters, um, sometimes it's a lonely walk in service and following the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Sometimes folks, I, I tell you, you feel that you're going through a dark tunnel and there is no end uh, to it. Uh, but I'm saying, folks, learn to encourage yourself. Uh, find something to encourage yourself. Uh, praise God says, my sins are forgiven. Uh, my name is written in the last book of life. Uh, praise God to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Heaven is my 
old. I'll be walking on the streets of gold shortly. Praise God, I'll be sitting with my Savior, my Jesus. Learn to encourage yourself, my brother and my sister. Glory to God. The King James Version tells us that Jesus set his face steadfastly toward Jerusalem. Notice, folks, his position. Notice his determination in the midst of one of his closest saying, do not do it. And he, and he was saying it. You see, Peter was not aware of how the devil was using it. Some people are not aware how the devil, folks, are using them. You have to understand, sometimes they think they're doing good and they're doing good for you. When, folks, the devil is really using them. It got to take a trained spiritual eye. It got to take somebody who is mature in their faith um, to see these things uh, and to understand these things. Uh, the devil is very, very subtle, folks. Um, sometimes you come through a Delilah. But be caution, folks. Sometimes you come through a Peter as well, too. Uh, someone close, someone in the inner circle um, to discourage you, uh, to mess you up. Uh, someone that you think that really has the best interest at heart for you. Uh, be very, very careful like Job. Uh, he had a wife that loved him so much. Um, but in his trial, she also recommended very strongly, very highly, curse God and die. He had to look up in his suffering pain uh, and said, listen, Shall we at the hand of the Lord uh, not only receive the good uh, that he has blessed us with in so many, many years uh, and now our portion is uh, evil. Listen, uh, you speak uh, very foolishly, dear wife. Um, I will not quit. Uh, I will not give up. Uh, I will not throw in the towel because I know if God even slays me, if God chooses to take my life, in taking my life, I will not deny him. But I will trust him still, praise God. Can you do that tonight, somebody? If you are being stripped of everything in your life right now, if you have been stripped of your wealth, if you have been stripped of folks of your material things, if you have been stripped of certain things, folks, and you have been brought right low down, do you have the courage and do you have the faith like Job the same? If God chooses to slay me, I will continue to trust in him. If I have to eat roti and butter, I will trust in the Lord. If I have to eat fried bake and fried bake and fried bake, I will trust in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If I just have to drink tea without milk, I will trust the Lord. If I have no sugar, I will trust the name of the Lord. Still, glory to God. Hallelujah. Because whatever my circumstances are, I will continue to trust the Lord. I will not give up. I will not quit. I will not throw in the towel. Praise God. But I will continue to serve the Lord. I will be like a Job. Hallelujah. I will say, I know my Redeemer liberty. And he will vindicate me on that last day. Praise God. When everybody turns against me, the Lord will not give me up. The Bible says in Romans 31, if God be for us, then who can be against us? No weapon. In Isaiah, the Bible tells us, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Jesus was determined that no matter what happened, he would be faithful to the mission that God had for him. So the Bible says he set his face steadfastly towards Jerusalem. Even as Jesus was now hanging on the cross, the people below him were mocking him as our Savior was suffering and saying, if you really are the Son of God, they were still not convinced after all that our Savior did. After all, folks, the mighty, powerful miracles. And after all the cheering of the crowd. And people were not boasting that indeed he is the promised one. But yet when Christ was on the cross, they thought very differently, folks. I tell you, folks, let me say this. Be very careful about your confidence in man. Be very, very careful about your confidence in man. People are quick to change someone. 
Amen. They will change. They will say one thing about you today. And folks, tomorrow they will say another thing. Get wise up here tonight. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. Come on, glory to God. Come on. People will change the opinion of you, folks, all the time. That's how people are. One day they'll be singing your praises. The next they say, crucify you. Get rid of you. That's uh, how it is. Uh, the Bible says, don't put your confidence in flesh. And don't put your confidence in the arm of flesh. Uh, but put your confidence in God. Hallelujah. You want somebody, folks, to put confidence in? Put it in God. Put it in His Word. He never fails. Glory to God. And His Word is unchangeable to God. His Word, folks, uh, cannot be altered. It is settled forever in the heavens and the earth. And, and so, even on the cross, the devil would not give up. I mean, the devil wanted to make sure that, folks, that Jesus ain't coming back at all. He wanted to make sure that folks had got Jesus um, to disobey, got Jesus to alter the plan that God had for him. He wanted to make sure that, Je that Jesus would never fulfill the mission that God sent. And even on the cross, the man was relentless. Um, that's who the devil is. Um, that's how to describe the devil. There are many descriptions of the devil, but one, he is very relentless. Um, he do not give up, so why should I? If the devil don't give up, uh, folks, why should we give up as a church? Come on, somebody. The devil, folks, uh, I mean, he comes and he comes and he comes. The man has no shame. No matter how much he's beaten, he's coming back again. He has no shame, folks. The devil is relentless. Uh, and if he does not get you one way, he will come another way, folks. If he doesn't get you from the back, he'll come at the front. If he doesn't get you to the left, he'll come at the right. If he doesn't get you to the bottom, he'll come on the top. But be sure about it. As long as we have one lies here, the devil will keep on coming. But great is he that is in us, than he that is in the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have the ultimate victory. On the cross, they will continue, continue to mock him in many, many ways. They will continue to, through people again. Remember, there are two ways that the devil will always come at you. Listen very carefully, folks. I've learned this after all these years of being a Christian. There are two ways that the devil will always come at you. One is through your circumstances and the other through people. Mark my words and you will see always is through. These are the two ways that the devil comes at you to tempt you, to bring you down, to break you, to destroy you. He uses your circumstances and uses people. Always be on guard. So he used those people around the cross um, and they were here saying taunting Jesus. Uh, the thief he was using on the cross as well too. If you are the son of God uh, then come down from this cross uh, and save yourself uh, and save us. Uh, folks and continue and continue even in Jesus' dying moments. Bleeding and in pain, and he was mocked and he was scuffed. In fact, folks, uh, the devil wanted him to display his mighty power because the people didn't know it, but the devil knew who Jesus was. Amen. Because he was in his presence in the heavens. Amen. Jesus created Lucifer. Glory to God. And without a shadow of a doubt, he knew who this was the Son of God, God the Son. Hallelujah. Praise God. The devil knew that. And, and so the devil now was um, here tempting Jesus. Um, man, you have the power. I know you have the power. Yes, sir. Why shame yourself before the world? Manifest your power. It is nothing for you to come on nails. Can't hold you. The devil knew that. Uh, this wooden cross could not hold you. You think the devil did not know that? Uh, the whips could not break him. Do you think, folks, the devil did not know that? Uh, the devil knew that. Uh, the only thing that held Jesus Christ on the cross, uh, it is you, folks. Uh, it is the love uh, that Jesus has for sinners. Uh, those were the true names on the cross uh, that held his hands fastened to that pole and his feet fastened to that pole it was love for sinners like you and you and you and you and every one of us uh, and every person upon the planet earth uh, those are the things those are the nails uh, that held Christ on the cross uh, it was simply love for sinners uh, and the devil knew that if he got Jesus to demonstrate his power 
and to just break down from that cross. Uh, folks, he knew that salvation could not come. Salvation could only come if that cord had, fall, had to fall in the earth, and that cord had to die. But in so the death of a cord, glory to God, it will yield. Praise the Lord. Yes, and yes, and yes, of course. It will multiply and multiply and multiply. Glory to God. And so it has done exactly that. And Jesus continued to hang there until finally we read the words of the Bible. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Into my hands I commit my spirit. Folks, how can I summarize the words or the seven sayings of Jesus on the cross? I can only summarize it, folks, in the light of our messages that we have been sharing that that is what you call being forever faithful. That to me, folks, uh, is uh, a true demonstration, the ultimate demonstration of what faithfulness uh, is all about. Glory to God. Our Savior was faithful even to the point of death. Death could not break him, folks. Uh, glory to God. He deemed that I would be faithful to the very end. Uh, no amount, that is why I refuse even the gold. The Bible tells us that, that bit of wine, that spoiled wine. Because folks, um, Jesus took on the 100% pain. Um, no anesthetics whatsoever. 100% pain. He felt it. Um, he felt the sin of every man, woman, boy and girl. From Adam to the last one that will be born upon planet Earth, he tasted death, the Bible says, for every man, that no man should die, and no man, and no woman, and no boy, and no girl should die and go to hell. Jesus tasted death for every one of you in this auditorium here tonight. And for those who are viewing my Facebook tonight, I want you to know that Jesus tasted death for you and he paid for your sin that you can have life, you can have a home in heaven, praise God. All you have to do tonight is to repent of your sin and trust in Christ and accept the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary for you. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. The faithfulness of Jesus has inspired the faithfulness of many others throughout the ages who hung in there when the going was tough when the going was so tough and they almost felt that there was no more strength to hang in there could you just see yourself for a moment folks that you are hanging on to a piece of rope there is a precipice thousand feet down and you are hanging on there for life because you know, if you let go of that rope, that you will fall to a death and be crushed. You are tired because you've been hanging there for a while. You are tired, tired, tired. Your muscles are so exhausted. The pain is excruciating as you are hanging, in, hanging there. Because you know, I can't let go. Because if I let go, I am going to die. But folks, even then, I tell you, the urge is just let go because you can't take it any longer. But I want to say to you tonight, if you are there, my seat, my brother and sister, if you are there hanging on on that rope and you feel tonight that you cannot hang on there anymore, it is just too much, too much pressure, Pastor, too much weight. I just can't hang in there. I want you to look at Christ who hung on the cross and stake the, the cross. Praise God. Until man's redemption was paid. He, folks, is your ultimate example. Not even me, your pastor, is the ultimate example, folks. It is Christ. Praise God. He hung in there. When it was tougher and when 
Daniel was being said to give up, he said, no, I will not give up uh, because I love man too much. Uh, if I give up now, there will be no hope for man. If I give up, uh, there will be no hope uh, for the people in power and science ministries uh, that is to be born and is to come and is to be saved. Uh, if I give up, Shona will never be saved. Uh, if I give up, Sadi will never be saved. Uh, if I give up, Lishon will never be saved. Uh, Kamika will never be saved. Uh, Dalini will never be saved. Uh, if I give up, Bija will never be saved. Uh, Austin will die and go to a burning hell. Simbu will die and go to a burning hell. Jenna will die and go to a burning hell. If I give up, Joyce will never have the opportunity to enter into heaven and walk on the streets of gold. If I give up, Sarita will not make it to heaven. Hell will be her portion, glory to God. And Jesus said, them, because I see all those people not born but will be born. And if I give up and if I quit, they will all go to an endless eternity. And so I will hang in there, praise God, because the salvation of man depends on me not being a quitter. No, sir. The salvation of man depends on me staying the course, finishing the course, being forever faithful. That's who our Jesus is. If you're looking for inspiration tonight, look to Christ. Look to the cross. Look, brothers and sisters, your Savior, bleeding on the cross of Calvary. And the devil is saying, quit uh, and come down. If you are the Son of God, save yourself and save us. But Jesus would not listen, uh, folks, uh, to those voices. Uh, he knew his mission. Uh, he knew what he was called to do. He knew what his purpose was. Uh, and folks, he hung in there for who? You, 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 and me. Every one of us here this evening. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Folks, I say to you all tonight that you can indeed find hope in the darkest hour through the faithfulness of God. In closing this evening, I share with you a story. This story is about a man by the name of Harry. Church. And so he knows this to be so true about God's faithfulness in the darkest hours. Do you know, folks, that greater the darkness, greater the light shines? Do you know that, somebody? Mm -hmm. That's why, kind of. You know, I'm, I'm just moving as the Spirit leads. And Matthew 14, you'll remember clearly. The disciples were in big, 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 big trouble. Jesus had sent them to get over on the other side in that little boat of theirs. Jesus didn't get on that boat with them at this time, but he went up into a mountain, the Bible says, and he was praying all night in prayer. You remember that? The Bible tells us the fourth watch of the night, to be specific. And if you understand that particular time of the night the darkest hour of the night is from that three to six it's the darkest hour just before the sun comes up those are but that last quarter is by the quarters so you have first second third watch in the bible all right and that last watch before the sun comes up it is the dark always the darkest hours before the sun comes up the Bible tells us that these disciples were not bold and they were fighting for their lives. For their lives. Hmm? To get to safety. No matter how much they tried to bring that boat to safety, they were up against a major, major storm that came down upon them suddenly. They were powerless. To bring themselves to that shore. Absolutely powerless. Their boat was like a cork. Dancing in that water. Back and forth. And they knew. Because they were experienced fishermen. You have to understand. Before Christ met them. That, that was their trade. Most of them. Fishermen. They knew the seas better than everybody else. And they knew. That this was a situation. 
It will take a miracle to get them out of that situation. But still, they had to try. They couldn't stay there and do nothing. They fought, they fought, and they fought hard, folks, trying to bring that boat to the shore. They saw their lives passing before them. They saw their wives and their children and their families back home. This was the last time that they were going to see them. All these things were going through their mind. It was a time of hopelessness and despair for those disciples on that boat. And they were wondering in their minds, where is Jesus? Where is the master? He sent us. He sent us to go on the other side. And Lord, we need you more than we ever need you. Why were you not in this boat in the first place? Why did you send us out there alone? Folks, when you are struggling and when you are feeling, you are looking for answers because you are desperate. Be careful in those desperate times. The devil could throw a bone for you. Folks, be careful in those desperate times. The devil could throw a bone for you. He knows that when people are desperate, they will grab at almost anything. Come on, someone. Almost anything when you are desperate. Be very careful, folks, in the time of desperation. The decisions that you make, never make major decisions. Somebody says, a wise saying, never make major decisions, folks. When you come to those places, those times in your life, you've got to take time out. Because people make rash decisions when they are facing certain things, folks. And later on, they realize that they made the wrong decision because they were too hasty. Have you ever been hasty in making decisions? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And later on, you regretted it? You said, if I had thought this thing through, you know, take a little time, seek some godly advice. I wouldn't make a mess of it. But because of that moment of desperation, you just want a solution. You just want a way out. And anybody recommends anything, you are gone. I know it, folks. If you are sick and you are pain, Anybody says to you anything, try this, try that. I have been there, you have been there. Try this bush medicine, try that bush medicine. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? And everybody is yeah. saying something for you to try. They mean well, they mean well, folks. And here you are at this point in time, you are willing to try any, anything because you are in pain, you are in trouble, you just want to get out of it. And you are willing. But be careful, the devil takes advantage when we are most vulnerable. Yeah. Come on, somebody. When you're most vulnerable, that is the time, folks, we're going to stay closer to the cross. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Stay closer to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And here they were. But you know, the Bible tells us that Jesus came the fourth hour of the night, the fourth watch of the night. And how did Jesus come? Was Jesus on another boat? A rescue boat? Folks, was he on Baywatch or something like that? Coming over to rescue them? Hello, somebody? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus on 9, somebody called 911, and here it is that Jesus came with all those, um, those rescue officers. Mm -hmm. And the fire rescue officers that, that come with Jesus coming to them with all his heavy equipment and so on. Mm -hmm. Do you see just that? Folks, Jesus did not need a boat. Come on, he did not need a jet ski, my brother. I want to say to you that, glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God. How did Jesus come? Read your Bible. Jesus came walking on that water. Jesus came walking on, the, on, on, on that storm. Glory to God. Jesus was not afraid of the water. He was not afraid of the storm. Why should he? He created in the first place. <laughs> he is the creator. And he created the ocean. And because the fact that he is the creator, he could walk on it as how much as he wants. Amen. For as I'm concerned, folks, he could have been walking on that water for days. Not a problem, praise God. He could have been walking on that water for months. Not a problem, praise God. Because why? He created the water. The water had to lift Christ up. Glory to God. Because he's the God that created. The waters counted a privilege. The waters just gave up itself. My creator, my king, my God wants to walk on me. Here I am just the sea sailor. I am just a 
serve on him. Glory to God. It's a privilege for Christ to walk on him. But Jesus was demonstrating his mighty power as the God uh, who created all things. Uh, demonstrated to the world, demonstrated to the disciples uh, that the very storm that has swept in to destroy your life uh, is the very storm now that I uh, now am walking upon. Uh, the very storm, glory to God, that I'm in control of. Uh, praise God, hallelujah. Your circumstances tonight uh, that might want to seem to destroy you, I want to say there's nothing for God uh, to come to your way tonight, folks. Uh, praise God and to bring deliverance in the midst of your storm. He you don't have to wait till that storm is over. Jesus don't have to say, rain check for us. Uh, can't you see there's a storm and you crying out for me to come? You crazy. I'm not going to come out in no storm. I'm going to wait till the storm is over and then I'm going to come looking for you guys. Is that the way that Jesus look at the situation? Folks, uh, Jesus was not afraid of no storm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The disciples needed help from uh, Jesus. Jesus says, uh, I'm going to come and I'm going to help you and I'm going to show you the very things that are threatening to destroy you, the very things that you are fearful of. Um, I want to show you how to handle the situation, not with fear, but with faith, um, because faith is uh, the victory, praise God. Hallelujah! When Jesus stepped out him in his earthly form, brothers and sisters, he moved in faith and confidence. Praise God. He had no question in his mind. That I could walk on this water. Glory to God. And I'm not going to sink because he knew who he was. You gotta know who you are tonight. Praise God. And understand, folks, as long as you're in Christ, it doesn't matter the storms uh, that come your way, it cannot destroy you. This is what the Bible tells us. Glory to God. Uh, the flood will not overflow you. If you go through the desert places, God uh, will make that way. Praise the Lord, folks. Uh, this is what God is saying to you tonight. Um, so as much uh, as the storm has come against you, as much as the tempest has come against you, I'm saying to you tonight, folks, uh, look to your God. Uh, hallelujah. He comes with his power and deliverance uh, to let, deliver you in the time that you need him the most. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And folks, we get on with our story tonight. For years, Harry had been a successful publish of material for churches. Everything in his life seemed to be absolutely perfect. He had a lovely home. He had a great family. He had a solid future. But all of this suddenly collapsed. His world caved in very quickly, like Job. Hidden in one moment of time. Harry's wife told him that she was leaving him. And not only she was leaving him, but the worst was yet to come, that she was in love with another man. We are talking, folks, about a Christian, a dedicated Christian, strong in the church, for years in the church, faithful. And this is what will happen to me. Could you imagine how Harry felt? Obviously, he was devastated. Harry tried to cope. With that news, trying to cope in his work to continue his life, but the tragedy was too overwhelming for Harry. And despite all the other good things in his life, Harry felt like a complete failure, nothing to live for. Folks, there are some blows that will come to you, and the devil will cause you only to focus on that bad, and you will not see any good. It does not even stare you in the face. You can't see that good because that blow is so great. You know what I'm talking about, folks? You have so many other things to cheer you up and lift you up. But the devil have you focus on that one thing and it consumes your world and it consumes your mind that nothing else really matters. That's how clever the devil is, folks. Hmm? The devil can make you see a, a screen as as white as that screen is, but there is one fly that comes and put a dot on it. And folks, the devil will cause you for the rest of your life only to see that black dot on that screen. And that's all you see when you wake up in the morning. That's all you see when you wake up at night. All you're seeing is that dot. 
And here you have surrounded that dot. You have so much of white. So much to praise and thank God for. But you see, folks, um, devil blinds you to the many other blessings that God has blessed you with. Um, and all that you can see in your life um, is one bad thing. One bad thing. And for this now, I cannot move on. For this thing, I cannot give up. For this thing, folks, I cannot let go. Hmm? How it is that we are like that, my friend? Can't you forgive somebody for one bad that they have done and they have done a hundred good for you for all these years? Why can't you look at those things? Why do you have to look at one thing a person messed up? Folks, and that now for you is the reason why I should just leave that person. That I should just move away from everything because of one that one particular fault and that one particular failure. How, why it is, are we so folks? Why is the devil have us centered and only on that one duck? Centered on that one hand, one wrong, one shortcoming. Where folks, we have so much to bless God and to praise God. But to see the devil is a master of that. The devil is a master of that. And so our minds are consumed about this problem. And that problem might be so small. But the more you look at it, and the more you study it, and the more you meditate upon it, and the more you focus on it, is the more that you give the problem the power to grow. You give the power, the, the problem, the power to go. You energize that problem. That's what we are doing. You are putting manual every day. Every day you are putting manual to the root of that problem, and it is growing and growing and growing and growing, folks. That is the devil is so clever. And so there was Harry. There was Harry. He couldn't see any good thing in his life anymore. He just felt that. Nothing is worth living for anymore because of what his wife did. He was on the road to meet with the church about their anniversary publication. He arrived early. So he sat down in the fellowship hall and suddenly began to think about suicide. We don't want to talk about it, but folks, a lot of people have contemplated suicide, not once, but a few times in their life. And especially during this time of COVID, let me tell you something. That will increase. Suicidal thoughts will increase. If you lose your job, and you do not have, folks, a rock that you can stand on. And I'm talking about the solid rock. You can find your place. Find yourself in a place that where... You would not want to admit it because you'll be shamed tonight to even admit such a thing. But you know it's going on in your heart. Life is not worth it. It is better I was not born. It is better I take my life. It is better that I commit suicide. See, an end it all. It's a reality that is taking place in our world today, folks. Because people are not standing on that rock. They've been standing on the circumstances all their life and not on that rock. What about you tonight? Where are you standing? I hope you're standing upon the solid rock. Amen. Whatever your problems are, I'm not saying there are no problems. I'm not saying, folks, I don't want to, to live a life and to say that everything is perfect and I have no problems. I don't want to live a lie and say that I have no pains. I don't want to live a lie and say I don't have no disappointments. I'm human. I live in this body. And I face those things every single day, folks. Uh, but I face it with God and trust in God. Amen. That even those things are there, my God is still better. And because Jesus did not quit, folks, I am not going to quit. And I'm not going to go down in history as a quitter. I'm not going to go down behind this pulpit and people, people are saying, the pastor was good, you know. That man was a good boy. That man could have preached. Oh, I tell you, could I do a funeral? If ever you're dead, make sure you hire him for your funeral. He could have that. Boy, weddings, man, top of the line. Do some of the best, best, best weddings. Come on with some of the best jokes. Exciting, exciting. Wow, I tell you, people don't sleep on there. He's preaching at all, at all, at all. You know, he's that, that good. I tell you, people don't want to leave to go home. He's that good. 
But the only thing I got to say about him, boy, the man, the man quit on us and he run away. You think I want to go down, sir? Nah. What about you? You want to go down, sir? Sometimes it doesn't matter, folks. All you live your whole life, it matters how you end it. Hallelujah. The start might be okay. And everything that happened between the start and the finish, a lot of things, folks, you may not be remembered for any of those things. People can't remember too much of that. But if you remember how you finish, that's how they remember. Finish well for the Lord. Amen, somebody? Amen. Don't quit. Don't run away. You have a God that is greater than your problem. Amen. And he could solve any problem. Jesus. Praise God. He could move any mountain. And if you want to move the mountain, folks, he will move you through the mountain. Amen. He moved you around the mountain. Come on, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's the God. We'll finish this another time as the Lord will lead. But join with me in prayer. Would you have tonight? Would you say this prayer this evening if you have never trusted in Christ? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and folks, is, is there anybody tonight? Is there anybody tonight here that's saying, Pastor, I am ready to walk with Jesus. I'm ready to live for Jesus. Son. I'm ready to come at the foot of the cross. Son. I'm ready to serve Jesus. Son. I'm ready to become his own. I'm ready to be washed in the blood of Christ. Here is my hand tonight. Would you just remember me in prayer because I am accepting Christ as my Savior. Would you lift your hand right now? If you have God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. As we sing just as I am without one plea, congregation rise, glory to God, ministers of music come. I'm going to be down right here at the, uh, at the altar. I'm going to take you, uh, take you in prayer tonight. Almost going to say, take your hand. I know they're watching me. <laughs> glory to God. But I'm going to be here tonight to receive you and to pray with you for all those who lifted your hands. Believe us, continue to be in prayer. This is a very solemn moment in the house. When people have lifted their hands, they need courage to walk down. The devil will want to keep them in that chair. And say, don't make yourself a fool. Stay right where you are. But listen, it's time to kick the devil out. And says, listen, I am for heaven. I am for eternal life. Would you come as you say, just as I am. Without one way, but that thy blood. Yes, those who lift in your hands, so would you come join with me and pray at the altar right now? nails that kept him on that cross 
It was for his love for sinners like me. And I know that I could never save myself. I could never get to heaven on my own because I have sin in my life. And so I repent of my sin and I ask forgiveness and I trust in Jesus for eternal life, a ticket to heaven, a home in that mansion. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful that you heard my prayer and you saved my soul. And from today onward, I will serve you and live for you. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, I thank you, dear Lord, for the folks that came down here tonight and they sent the sinner's prayer before the audience. But Lord, it is before the throne of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord that they cry out for mercy. You have heard their prayer today. Lord, that their sins are forgiven. Their names are written in the last book of life. And we do pray, dear Lord, that we'll be able, dear Lord God, to help them and to disciple them as they grow to become fruitful believers for Christ. Faithful believers for Christ. Finished believers for Christ. Thank you for them and everyone. Lord, we have said that prayer, dear Father, tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to follow my dear friend and brother, Brother Neil. He's going to take you guys, all right, to that room there and talk with with you and especially you Joyce because I, I know glory to God that these already uh, done that and they just uh, made sure tonight that they be dedicated their life because they're very sensitive to the spirit of the Lord and if you want to accommodate her as, as well too all right glory to God so God bless you God bless you amen come on give the Lord a good hand somebody so yes you can put them over there you got meal there amen 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 Thank you, Jesus. So Wednesday, God's willing to be back here for Bible study and prayer. Cannot overemphasize the need for us um, to continue to do so. Remember, there is the Christmas quarter waiting for you. You can uh, see many people are going over there. Uh, tonight is a good night to come and to take a picture, a photo. Also look at the wonderful Christmas box that we have. Uh, and the toys are getting in there. Praise the Lord. And we have uh, our Christmas morning service, 7 o'clock, to make sure that you are prepared for that. But prior to that, our Christmas dinner, and it's uh, coming up on the 20th, so it's going to be, is that uh, next Sunday? It's next Sunday evening already. I mean, it's really going on really, really quickly. Okay, and it starts at 6.30. We're really, really excited, and lots of groups in the church are working forward, uh, working hard for, for that. So we're going to have a a great season despite of the COVID, our God is alive. Amen. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. So I'm going to turn back now to the team who's going to wrap it up here this evening and to make any further announcements. All right. So I know God's willing. We'll see you all on Wednesday.